Hello everybody. Today we are being joined with, by Tanya from Beat the Binge and we're really, really excited to have you on here because binge eating and emotional eating is such a big deal right now and it's really, really cool to, to just have you on the show to get your expertise and insights and personal history um, to, to really, really resonate with, with our listeners today. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Excellent. So what we're going to do today, um, Tanya, is basically going to dive into your story a bit more. But before we do, can you just briefly introduce yourself uh, to our listeners, just basically who you are, what you do, where you're from type of thing? Yeah, no problem at all. So I used to be, I should just change, no, I don't want to say change my name. So I used to be called an emotional eating therapist. And, and actually yesterday I just thought, well, my programs are called Food and Body Freedom. So I was like, so I've actually just recently changed it to um, Food and Body Freedom Therapist, but I don't really, I'm not necessarily calling myself any type of any type of name, um, but I generally help people who emotionally binge eat, people who maybe yo-yo dieted, people who want to learn how to listen to their body with foods, people who've been on that roller coaster like we all have you know, with food and they just do not know how to get themselves out of it. So mm -hmm. I generally help people um, just get more in tune with their body and connect that trust, what they've lost with, with themselves and food. Yeah, beautiful. That's what I generally help people do. Beautiful, I love that. I also so like where food, yeah, sorry, and I, I wanted you to extend on that a little bit. I also help with um, like body acceptance, body image as well, because quite often, um, the, one of the core reasons as well as a lot of many other reasons is how we feel about ourselves and our body so I really work mm -hmm. on you know changing people how they um feel about themselves and how they feel about their body as well yeah that's much much needed and I'm so happy um that you know there's people like you out in the world doing what it is you're doing right it's so 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 important so do you want to just give our listeners a bit of your backstory so as you know our listeners very much experience stress anxiety but they really want natural solutions right they're interested in well-being not just fixing the problem right so mm. can you share like your journey and, and what's led you to do what you do today so I'll give you like a little bit of a backstory. So I, I started off very, very young with my mum. And I always remember being about 10 years old, maybe, maybe younger, and counting calories with my mum. And I used to pride myself, even at a really young age, for knowing nearly every calorie under the sun. And my mum, bless her, I mean, don't get me wrong, all our mums want the best for us, but there was comments on my body. You know, there was comments on my bottom. She'd tap my bottom. She'd, you know, really kind of like she was wanting the best for me. But what what it was a very underlying message that I wasn't good enough or I wasn't enough as I was. And it really kind of like affected how I felt about myself. And I think growing up, I then just never felt enough. I never felt good enough. I felt I always felt like I never really fit in as well. Um, so and I think a lot of people do feel like that. A lot of people feel like they don't fit in and they're not enough. Um, so many people do. And I probably had, you know, anxiety at a really young age. And I never really recognised what it was because when I was younger, they didn't really have such, I don't want to say labels, but they didn't really have labels and not that particular light labels, but they didn't really have, you know, it wasn't as well known as what it is now. And I used to just try any type of escape route. So when I was like teenager, I got into like, drugs I was doing loads of drugs from you know for years and years and years um my first partner actually died um because of this you know there was lots of people in my life that that died because of that lifestyle um and then I ended up in hospital so I ended up in hospital um because of this lifestyle and and it gave me the kick kick up the backside that I needed basically to change my life and then I got into fitness <laughs> So I went from one extreme to the other, and I'm not saying fitness is like an extreme, but it can be depending on how it's used. And I used it to the extreme because I wasn't drinking, I wasn't doing drugs, I wasn't doing taking any, you know, paracetamol, any, any kind of pharmaceutical drugs at all. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would take the occasional paracetamol, but I wasn't taking anything. I wanted my body to be as clean as possible. And I just want, went from one extreme to the other. And as we know now that it's the very all or nothing you know, mentality, you know, I was either all in or all out and it was the same with everything. I was either full doing, like getting absolutely off my, off my face, off my tits or whatever. And then, you know, I was either full in fitness 
<laughs> and I was I went head first into fitness and then I ended up I ended up doing um bikini competition so I did bikini competitions and it was at that point that when I was doing nothing so when I was doing no drugs no nothing I, it was almost like all the things I'd suppressed throughout my life all the anxiety everything that I was trying to bury just came out and it came out in food and there's there was a lot of reasons for that it was kind of a, a multiple different reasons to why it came out in food but I then obviously started binge eating you know I and I never had a very healthy relationship with food anywhere. So like I said, right from 10 years old, I never, ever had a good relationship with food. I was, you know, starving myself. And I was binge eating anywhere throughout. When I look back, I was actually binge eating anywhere. It just wasn't recognised as that. And because I was doing substances, I was kind of starving myself and then eating anywhere afterwards when I could eat. Does that make sense? Yeah. So then it came out after, um, it came out really full speed ahead after like competing and my anxiety and I, I really like don't like calling it my anxiety because I feel like I'm claiming it but I, I always do refer back to it as my anxiety because it was just absolutely through the roof um I remember I used to try and drown out my own thoughts when I used to be in my car with the music I used to try and drown out my own thoughts because I just couldn't switch them off and um yeah it it was just I just couldn't turn my thoughts off I couldn't turn my feelings off I couldn't turn my thoughts off I didn't know what to do with myself you know there was times when I, I used to work in a corporation and there was times when I'd just go in the bathroom and I'd be like pacing the bathroom because I just didn't know what to do with myself because my mind I'd go outside to try and like change how I felt and you know my thought process because my thoughts just wouldn't calm down um and then I then I realized it was actually because it used to take me hours and hours to go shopping. I don't know if uh, you guys have probably recognised this, but it took, took me hours and hours to go shopping. I used to be down the biscuit aisle, I used to be down the cereal aisle, I used to be counting everything, looking at all the, you know, the calories and macros, everything. And then one day I found um, a mistake on one of the, you know, the labels, nutritional labels. And I went to this customer service lady and it was probably when I was at the height of, you know, my binging <laughs> I went to this customer service lady and I said to excuse me there is a, a, a mistake on this label and it was her face that actually made me realize that my my behavior wasn't quite I don't want to say normal but we know what we mean quote unquote normal and it was at that point when I thought oh I need to do something about this I need to do something about it because I've been doing quite a few things that again wasn't quote unquote normal um and it was that kind of hair face, <laughs> that realisation that somebody was looking at me in that way as if to say like, oh my goodness, May, what is mm -hmm. like, what is going on here? And it was a face of shock. And I walked away from that lady and that, that's when I, I got help. Wow. Yeah, I reached out to somebody and got help. Thank you so much for sharing that. There's so many different directions we could go in with that, but I, I just really want to say thank you for sharing your vulnerability on it because not enough people are talking about their experiences in this way and we can only really connect mm. the dots when we look backwards so like you said like now you can almost see how how you got to that point and mm. as much as i'd love to dive in on that with you i want us to steer now into when you got help what mm. what was the key things that really helped you the most to get you on your onward journey oh there's so many things so many things so Changing how I see was massive. Changing how I saw food, because I was very much in that all or nothing mentality. Um, changing how I behaved around food. Um, changing how I felt about myself. Um, changing how I felt about my body. Um, there was so many, like, changing my beliefs as well, like changing my beliefs, my values, how I saw the world, you know, like, because when we're in it, we cannot see, we can only see. It's like we can't see the woods through the trees mm. and we, we cannot see this peripheral vision. We, we can only see forwards. And even then it, that, that seems like a struggle. Mm. We just feel so, so buried within everything. We just, we don't know what to do ourselves. And I had to change quite a lot. I had to change, you know, like, um, you know, 
obviously my emotions as well, but mainly how I thought, because obviously how we think affects how we feel. Mm. Um, and then obviously how we respond to things. Um, but yeah, it was a huge learning from in lots and lots and lots of different ways. Huge. There's so many different areas to go with this because like we know when we binge eat or when we emotionally eat, it can be for several reasons. It's, it's not just one. And, you know, they, they can be just one reason, but they can be multiple reasons and we can be doing all of those multiple reasons. Yeah, yeah it's not always as simple as problem equals this solution, right? There's yeah. often many problems that get tangled up and then we yeah. often are looking for these other different solutions that yeah. are usually things that might not help us too because there's a part of most people that will test the waters in certain things first like they'll go mm. and try the the 10 day detox they'll go and try to join a gym they'll go yeah. and try all of these things before they mm. actually then realize do you know what maybe there's something else going on inside that needs my attention yeah um, that's really powerful and, and what i found as well is it's almost like people want the quick fix well they do want the quick fix but what i'm saying is they recognize something isn't isn't working but they keep chasing, chasing the quick fix mm. and it's like it's only until something either triggers them or they recognize like okay enough enough that it takes them to get to that point to actually look at look and do the inner work mm. because it's almost that we're all looking for this external thing we're all looking for this physical thing well actually everything starts with within everything starts with within yeah. and mm. the more we can focus on that instead of trying to change you know like you said, go on this 10-day detox or whatever it is that we're doing, you know, it's never it's never going to work. We're always going to be chasing that thing, always, because it's not about the Absolutely. thing. It's not about the physical. Absolutely. I, I can completely relate with that, especially um, what you're saying. We, as human beings, we're, we want that instant gratification, that quick fix. And like you said, we can try a thousand different quick fixes and none of them work, but we're still holding on to that shred of hope that there's going to be one that's going to work. And like you say, yeah. until we stop focusing on that, finding the external fix and start working on mm. the the internal, that's where the change mm. happens. That's when that's when yeah. you see the change that you want that, that you want to that you want to see. Um, and that happens for me. I I had a very unhealthy attachment to 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 food, but from the other extreme um, um, of the spectrum, whereas. I went completely to the quote unquote good foods, healthy foods uh, mm. thing was I cut out everything that was supposed to be bad um, for you, which is sugars, cakes and stuff. But I went so far to the other extreme where I wouldn't even put a little bit of sauce on my food. I wouldn't even go out to restaurants. I'd be so strict with what I was eating and the amount I was eating. Um, it became an obsession and became a very unhealthy obsession and I wasn't feeling great I was still feeling crap I was still feeling I was in pain a lot I was exhausted I was I was just my body it was just all over the place in terms of uh, the results I was looking for and it and I was trying these quick fixes I was spending so much money on supplements and all these things to try and get the result thinking okay this is going to speed up the results it was only when I stopped looking for that external and started okay what instead of focusing on what I'm putting into my body from food, what am I putting into my body in terms of thoughts about yeah. feelings and how that affects the food I'm actually putting into my body. So when I started to connect that and do, do that inner work, that's when I started to, like you said, start to change my belief system around food. I started to change my whole concept of uh, what, what is good and what's bad um, and what's right and what's wrong. And start to realize that there is no generic standard. It is in, it's very individual to the person. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's very powerful when people start stop that search in the external world and start to do yes. that work internal and change, look at their beliefs around food, um, their thought processes, mm -hmm. their feelings around what they're eating and start to align it with um, what it is they want and who it is they want to be. Like you said earlier, is mm -hmm. um, when you used to mention like, my anxiety, um, and it's the same with a lot of people when they say it's my this, my that, we start to identify with it. And I've done that for so long. We claim it. Yeah, we claim yeah. it. And I used to say, like, um, if I used to hate my body or I used to hate this or this, it was always, oh, my, 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 I'm, I'm my stress, my anxiety, my, my anger. I was really buying into it. And that and it's would holding have, on to it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I used to hold on it's to it, which, which could so yeah, many yeah, physical yeah. problems, um, including how my body actually used Reacted. food. And this so-called yeah. healthy food I used to eat became actually 
had, it gave me adverse re uh, the, the opposite reaction, a negative effect to my body mm -hmm. because of the fact of how I was thinking, how I was feeling and what I was holding on to. So mm -hmm. that really helped me to see that, that, that big difference is whether you're putting so-called so bad food or good food into your body, how you're, what you're putting into your mind, the thoughts, the feelings are going to have such a profound effect on what happens yeah, yeah. to that food as well. And yeah. how, how you go forward with what you're eating and what you perceive yeah, yeah, yeah. and how you perceive the food you eat. Now there'll be, people, there'll be people listening to this that are hearing it. They almost get it intellectually. They kind of know that that sounds right for them, but where do they start in, in your model of the world, Tanya, where does somebody start when we're talking about, okay, let's just take the focus off of food almost for a moment and consider the thoughts and emotions. Where does somebody start that might be listening to this? Can I just go back a second there? Cause I really want to just go back to what you were saying. Um, so that's exactly the place I was in too. Mm -hmm. So I was completely obsessed with everything healthy. I wouldn't even put, you know, um, I, it got to the point I didn't put any salt on my food at all. And we know that obviously rehydration and stuff like yeah. that, and, you know, good quality salt is good for your body. But it got to the point where I was doing, I was, I was putting like no sauce. I wouldn't put any gravy. I wouldn't put absolutely, there was absolutely everything in my food that were bland, that was quote unquote clean. That was like, I was completely obsessed. And the same as what you're saying, I mean, because, because obviously I competed four times as well. So it was like the fact I've competed four times and I got to that place where, I mean, I don't know, I don't know if any of you two have competed. I think, I think you, have you competed, I think? Um, I did it. I did a yeah, like a photo shoot, a physique photo shoot um, at that time. So that was yeah, that was a struggle mentally, a yeah. very big time. That's what, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and getting and so when I was and getting yourself in a really quite clean state, which you think which you actually think is healthy at the time, which you really want to hate and you're really miserable and you're really sad and actually the most unhealthiest time in your life you're very anxious and then but then also not only that the state that you are in in that place but then having to go from that place and then go back to a quote-unquote normal weight that in itself is oh my goodness me that is just like mind it, it, it plays with your head it plays mind games so I just wanted to kind of like you know resonate I really do get what you were saying then when you were saying about my obsession with healthy food I had this whole thing about like you know which is good which is bad i can't touch that food i can't go near that and i almost had anxiety well i did have anxiety, I had huge anxiety around it i won't go to certain restaurants i'd only go to a restaurant if i had certain food you know like so yeah that's huge as well you know it used to affect me in my social life you know my family life I, i'd go to my mum's and i would almost like be angry because i could smell their food <laughs> you know like because i could smell food that i couldn't have yeah does that make sense? Oh, so I really, really got everything that you were saying then, everything. Awesome. And yeah, it's just so true. It's just important for people to realize that emotional eating is on both ends of the nutritional spectrum. It's not just it donuts is. and candies and, st and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it yeah, does yeah. equate to the, uh, you can go way far obsessed on the other, yeah, uh, yeah. other end of the spectrum as well. So that is also classed as emotional eating. Okay. Absolutely. And the thing is as well, we actually think we are doing our body a favor. And also, like you, my body responded in such a way that I was exhausted, I had constant fatigue. And now what I'm realizing as I've got older, I, my body is actually screaming stop. So there's a lot of different like ailments, injuries that are coming out. And I actually think it's because looking back at all the, the ways I used to push my push my body through to, to the extremes, like either through food or through training, I wouldn't listen to my body, I wouldn't stop. So now it's coming in niggly little injuries that it's kind of saying, you know, like you stop it now. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So, that stopped that stopped me completely in yeah. the tracks of chronic pain completely stopped yeah. me massively. But I think the question I always ask myself up to the point where I found the question, it took me a while to find um it will find the answer, which how why where do people start when like I was so involved in that I was exhausted, I was tired, I was angry, I was in pain. Um it's like what, what, where's the starting point for someone who's is going through that like what, what would you yeah. say to someone honestly I always believe the first step is awareness you know start being more aware um you know start 
if you are feeling, you know, if you're feeling fatigued, if you're feeling, if your body is giving you signals, signs and signals, and I'm not saying your body's going to stop and say to you, right, it's going to write a big stop sign and hold it up and say, stop, you need to listen to me. Your body's never going to do that, right? Your body gives you subtle signs and signals that they're there to be listened to. And it's when we ignore them signs that that's when we come into problems. You know, that's when we feel, feel fatigued. If you are feeling that way, your body is trying to tell you something. It's trying to tell you something that you are currently doing right now in your life isn't working. Now that could be, it could be diets. And I'm not saying, you know, um, it's anything's your fault because this is not, you know, <clears throat> but it could be, you know, your diet, how you're eating. It could be yeah, exercise, it could be your emotions, it could be stress, it could be anxiety. It could be how you feel about yourself. It could be traumas. It could be traumas that you've had in your past. You know, it could be how you feel about your body. It could be how you think. It could be your beliefs. It could be many different things. But whatever's happening in your body, if it's giving you like, if it's giving you either physical symptoms or emotional symptoms, it's saying something isn't working and you need to start recognizing that and being aware of it. And awareness is the first step. And just think like, okay, what am I doing in my life? What am I, am I putting too much pressure on myself? You know, perfectionism is huge. You know, we all want to be perfect. And actually, it, that word doesn't even exist. <laughs> you know, it's not measurable. You know, it, it's different for every, every pair. It's different for everybody. You know, what one person sees as perfect, another person would probably see as completely the opposite. You know, like, it doesn't exist. So we're all striving for this thing that actually... Is that realistic? Is that thing realistic? Mm -hmm. So if anything, I would always say, going back to the question, I would always say awareness and start listening. Start really listening to what your body is saying because it will be telling you something. I'm a real believer in that. Yeah, yeah, totally Absolutely. agree. And so it's everything you've said there just, just really, really resonates both personally and with what we see with clients that we work with as well. And, and it is, it's, we always say this, our listeners will be like, oh, here we go, I'm banging the awareness <laughs> drum again. But it's oh, really? because it's true. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, and it's so important to listen to it, right? And we have to listen yeah. to those behaviours as well, yeah. right? So yeah, the body's trying to talk to us, but it, if we're not listening to the feelings, yeah. it will start yeah, to yeah, show yeah. us through our behaviours and the things that we're mm. experiencing in life. So one thing I'd really like to get your thoughts on because I, I've read this when we was kind of doing our research for for this episode is you, you say that you feel like people are born knowing how to feel hungry how to feel full how to connect with with the essentially the truth of what we're born with yeah right, t tell us a little bit more about yeah tell us a bit more about yeah. that and how that feeds into what it is you do yeah so we are naturally born as babies. We um, we are born, the conscious mind's not actually grown. We're born in our subconscious. So it's like the baby, if you look at a baby, and I'm going to give you a baby, obviously we're going to go to when we're born, but when you think about a baby, when it gets fed, it will not overfeed unless you are shoving a baby, you know, shoving the bottle in the baby. But even still, a baby will cry when it's hungry and it will stop when it's full. And when a baby cries, there is absolutely no way you can say to a baby, just do your intermittent fasting, just wait for two more hours and I'll feed you then. <laughs> There's absolutely no chance you can do that, right? Because a baby will cry and cry and cry until it gets fed. And that is because it's predominantly in the, in the subconscious. Well, it is in the subconscious. Mm -hmm. It's in the sub subconscious mind. And there's no way you can reason with a baby, right? So it's like, this is what we want to go back to. We want to go back to that natural intuition. And unfortunately, because of all the many, many things that we, we do in society, you know, like crazy dieting, we don't listen to our body, we ignore our body, we don't, we don't listen or act upon what it's saying. We have lost all these signs and signals when it comes, especially when it comes to food. You know, we do not recognize when we are hungry until we are absolutely starving. You know, we don't recognize that we are full until we've been on about, you know, three packets of biscuits and five bags of crisps. And then we're absolutely stuffed, you know, and it's that it's them subtle signals before we are really either really, really starving or really, really, really stuffed. that I really help and work people to reconnect with because they're the things that we've lost. We've lost that in between them in between points. 
if that makes sense. So we, I really get to, um, yeah, help people tune into their body because quite often as, as well, when we are emotionally eating, we, we are eating out of emotions, not because we are actually hungry neither. Uh, you know, it, when we eat for our emotions, that's very fast. We're eating fast and we're eating furious. When we're eating out with natural hunger, natural hunger comes on very slowly. You know, it comes on slowly and gradual. But the thing with natural hunger is, like I said, most people do not hear it. Most people do not act upon it. And because we do not act upon it, we ignore it. And then what happens is our body doesn't trust us. It doesn't trust us to feed it. It doesn't trust us to give it the food that it wants and it desires. And when, when, when we do not feed it and when we do not give it the food that it wants and it desires, that's when we emotionally eat, when we binge eat. Um, <clears throat> and there is a difference between emotionally eating and binge eating, but they do have very similarities as well. Yeah. I, I want to um, touch on something that you just said there, because I think it's so powerful and I really want our listeners to hear it, is that you said that it's fast right mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. one awareness is important but we have to slow down in order to be able mm -hmm. to actually listen and pay attention and because yeah. life is fast unless we purposely yeah. slow it down we we have to cultivate that within our own world right in our own lifestyle mm -hmm. we have to find that space to be able to just pause slow down a little bit because that's the fastest way to get anywhere and it's it's just too easy to brush over the speed of things and i think I, I love your approach and I love the way you've described it because when we start to recognize the where we are when we're at our center and the subtle signs we then stop swinging on this pendulum back and forth to the extremes um, mm -hmm. so if anyone's listening to this is slow down and find that center I think is really really powerful but I'm curious to know how do you help clients or some, maybe something practical that somebody listening could do uh, right now to help them slow down or just become more aware of those subtle signs that you mentioned yeah so when you say slow down I mean it's really interesting because it's actually one of the most hardest things for people to do yeah. it's actually it sounds the easiest thing it sounds very very easy but it's actually one of the most hardest things to do, especially if you have been, you know, overthinking, you've got huge amounts of anxiety, you know, you've got high levels of stress. The first thing you say is, I've not got time for that. I've not got time for that. And actually, or your brain's going, oh my goodness me, you know, like it's going, you know, 10 to the dozen. And actually, I've had so many people say to me, I've not got time for that. And it's actually, those are the, and those are the people that need it more. And I remember when I really, really started to slow down and my body actually, again, it goes back to listening to my body. My mind was going so fast that I'd, I just had to sit. I just had to sit through it. I had to get my thoughts past a certain point to allow it to slow down. And if anybody is going through that point and they've never tried like breath work or meditation or just sitting still, even just try and sit sitting still just you know by yourself in a room with no disturbances nobody's around you and just sit just sit quietly without moving even for two or three minutes because the two or three three minutes is actually the hardest point it's actually the hardest hardest bit to get to because you will feel like that's a lifetime especially if you have been you know overthinking or you're very anxious you know that will feel like an absolute lifetime. But I really want you to recognize that we have like 60,000 to 90,000 thoughts per day, right? We have a lot of thoughts. And if we're anxious, we probably have a hell of a lot more. Mm. <laughs> but so what I'm saying, the reason why I'm saying this is thoughts pass. They pass us by, right? So it's how much time we give attention to them. But if we allow them to be there and then let them let, let them float past and let them pass us by they will pass you by it's like feelings you know they've passed too everything is temporary so the one thing I would say to somebody and especially if they are highly highly anxious is just practice being with themselves being in the present and being very very still and allowing themselves to hear their thoughts without judgment because this is a, a, a you know, quite often we have so many judgments on our thoughts and feelings and just know that they are not necessarily true neither. Yeah. They are not necessarily true. What you are thinking doesn't mean it's true. It doesn't mean it's gospel. It doesn't mean it's true. 
So just really allow your thoughts to pass you by and allow you yourself to be in the moment. And if you can breathe with it and you can breathe slowly and deeply, even better. But I would say in really small in increments, especially if you've um, you know, been really highly anxious or highly stressed or you've been overthinking, because quite a lot of people, anxiety has got a bit of a label, I think, and I think it can come in, you know, it, it can come in a spectrum. You know, it can be all different things from overthinking to really, really highly anxious. You know, it, it's a spectrum. So, you know, don't see it as a label. You know, just but if you find yourself overthinking, just be in the present, be with here and now. Are you safe right now? And just really recognize that you are safe, you know, you are grounded and that you are, you are, you know, safe exactly where you are. Nice. I think it's so powerful because I think any anyone who uses that. That, that terminology of I don't have time, I haven't got the time for that. I think anyone who's listening and you you notice you say that, stop, take a minute and think, okay, I need to yeah. slow down. Because yeah. when you slow down, you create more time. Um, yeah. It's when you're in that chaotic, in that, in that state of anxiousness is when you feel like you're losing time and you don't have enough time. So I think anyone, if you, if you say that to yourself, anyone listening is you say, oh, I don't have time for this stop yourself and go ah okay i need to now stop i need to slow down i need to sit i need to breathe and slow everything down and it's like you said it's practice we've how how many years have um have the majority of us been in that state of rush 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 go go i haven't got enough time it's not going to change overnight in, in two minutes of sitting down in stillness that takes practice and the more you practice it the easier it becomes and the longer you can do it for as well. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really very, very key. Practice. Yeah. And also I like, wanted to say, like you just said, then it takes practice. But mm. the thing is what quite often what happens is, again, with that all or nothing mentality, people can go in and they can go full speed ahead, right, I need to meditate, I need to breathe, and I'm going to try and do 10 minutes, I'm going to try and do 15 minutes. If you have never done it before and you are, very, you are overthinking quite a lot and you are you know, highly anxious, that might be too long for you. You know, and it's that very all or nothing mentality again. Now, just take your time. It doesn't, there's no rush. You know, like you said, the more you take time to do this, the more time you will have. And another point there is that it's not about, it's not mm. doing practice, it's a being mm. practice. And I, yeah. I, I was very much like that. I was a doer on the go, achiever mode, like just full steam ahead and somebody tells me to slow down I'll be like yeah all right whatever like that yeah. literally I'm at that point I'm like why would I do that? yeah <laughs> even though on some level I knew I really probably needed to yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and so th that that realization that I don't need to do meditation I need to be still I need to be yeah. quiet I need to be yeah. with myself I need to be safe I need to be in my body. I need to be present. And mm -hmm. for some for some people sitting still in a room, that just freaks them out, right? It freaked mm -hmm. me out because who knows what you're going to find, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and therefore, we build these like avoidance patterns. So something that I, I would just add here, just for anyone listening, if you feel like that resonates and you're really, really struggling to, to lean into something like this, is that's where support comes into play. Having somebody mm -hmm. to help you ease into that will help the element of safety and stability for you to be able to go where it is you need to go and able to kind of move through those thoughts and those feelings that you've mentioned as well. Yeah. Can I just touch on something else that you just said then as well, which um, often is the case with, you know, a lot of the people that I work with and obviously the, when, we're, when we're really, really anxious, like you said, we need to be in the body. Quite often there's a huge disconnect. Well, there is a disconnect between the mind and the body. And we are all very much in the head. We are all very much up here. We are so focused about what is being, you know, what is being thought, what we're thinking, you know, what the, what the mind is telling us. And there's a huge disconnect between the mind and the body. And this is where we need to go back to. Like you said, we need to reconnect. We need to be with ourselves. We need to be in our body. And that is where the beauty, when the beauty happens, when we get that connection. 100% can you give any really great examples that a listener could do straight off after this episode for example that help them to just drop into their body aside from just sitting still is there any other kind of little tactics you might have for them so I really like um breathing I like there's quite a few different I know you mentioned breathing a minute ago so like I really do like like there's lots of different things so they can either either be breathing so you can either like do box breath you can either do belly breathing um you can either do tapping 
You can either listen to meditations, guided meditations, if you feel uncomfortable. Um, you can listen to hypnosis. There's lots of different things out there that you can, you know, go onto YouTube. Go onto YouTube. There's fantastic things. There's some amazing apps. You know, um, there's Insight Timer. There's Calm App. There's some fantastic places that you can go that will really, really calm your state. And even just going out and going out in the fresh air and going in the garden, because that actually can really, it sounds almost very simple, but a lot of the things that we actually can do to help ourselves are simple. Even going outside in the garden, going out and breathing in the garden, getting some fresh air, you know, changing that state, changing your environment, changing who you are around, you know, really look at who you spend your time with. How does that person make you feel? Do they make you feel good about yourself? Or do you walk away from that person feeling anxious? If you do, really start to look at who you have around you. And I'm not saying that we, you know, we want to, we want to get rid of all our family and friends because that's not always possible, but start recognizing who makes you feel good. And go to places, do things that make you feel happy. What are the things that you have maybe stopped doing that you used to enjoy doing? You know, did you used to enjoy exercising? Did you used to like going for a walk with a dog or with friends? You know, did you used to like reading or having a manicure? Do the things that really, really makes you feel good. And it doesn't have to be anything lavish. It has to be about you. Where do you, when do you feel at your best? And really start looking at those, those things and how can you put those things back in your life? Because at the moment, what, when, when, we, when we're very stressed and we're very, very anxious, we are, have a lot of things in our bucket. And these big buckets are generally things that we feel we need to do and we have to do and we must do. Now, when, when our bucket is full, we forget that we need to also have other things in our bucket as well. So really look at the things that make you feel good. That's what I would so, so I just want to touch on one of the things you said about um, going outside and just um, like taking a few deep breaths and that. Um, I, that's such a powerful and simple solution. Yeah. And it's one of the best things to do. But what I want to add to that is if you go outside, bare feet, get your shoes and socks off, go into the dirt, into the grass, into the sand, into the sea, wherever you are, is the best cure for releasing stress and anxiety energy within your body is get outside and ground, get bare, bare feet in nature. It's it's such a powerful, simple solution and doesn't cost a thing. It's great. Yeah. Um, so what I would like to, uh, to ask you now is for anyone who's listening to this and go, oh my God, all this so much great information here. I, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to use this. Is if you could give one bit of practical advice to anyone listening, right, what would it be and why? On top of everything. On top of everything given. else you've already given. So just if for anyone, if they said, okay, Ooh. I want one thing that one. I'm going to do off the back of this episode, what would you tell them? Oh, there's so many. If, especially if there was, if there was like, if they were turned into food, there's so many. But I think ultimately it's recognize how you feel, you know, recognize if you're, you know, are you feeling good? You know, this is the big question. Are you feeling good or are you feeling negative? Are you feeling down? And really recognize, you know, your emotions. Where is this coming from? And instead of trying to suppress them, feel them. And again, this might need, you might need guidance with this. So I'm not, if you're not in a place where you can do this, this is where, again, where support comes in. But just recognize how you're feeling. Um, but like I said, there's so many different things I can I can suggest to people. Um as well as all the other things I'm like <laughs> yeah I think awareness is probably the first thing yeah definitely let me ask you this in your view of the world what do you believe it means to be well ah so when you say be well do you mean like be healthy be quote unquote wellness be whatever what your you mean, version of whatever wellness. it means what it so means my to version you. yeah so my version of well is you know to be emotionally physically mentally spiritually um balance and in a very in a in a I don't want to say in a good place because I don't want to put good and bad into it but in a place where you, you feel at peace and um, you feel free and um, you are there's not an inner battle there's not an inner turmoil you know you are very calm with your thoughts um I do not just think it's physical fitness I do think that physical fitness has a place but like everything, it's part of the puzzle. I think it's um, 
it's a puzzle. I think there's such a, I think obviously hydration, you know, I think there's so many components to it. Um, and it's not just looking at one of those. I believe that all the components should be balanced. I don't think that we should necessarily focus on one. Um, it's looking at our relationships, it's looking at our family life, it's looking at everything. It's looking at how we act, how we feel, how we think, um, how we behave. I could go on forever. <laughs> Beautiful, I love it. I yeah, absolutely love yeah. it. Oh, absolutely. It's just insight, integration <laughs> of everything, of every single area of our life, inside and out. So, it's totally yeah. aligned I'm with, with us. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's one of the reasons absolutely. why, obviously, I just felt so connected to you the first time that we spoke. It's just because we're, we're kind of mm. seeing from the same hymn sheet in a way. Um, and I just think that the more people can start to maybe listen to conversations like this and start to think, okay, well, what does wellness mean to them? What does it mean to mm. be well to somebody listening? So it's worth reflecting on because I think yeah. that way you get to live on your own definitions and your own terms, take the inspiration that you hear. And of course, all the practical tips that you've given that will help somebody achieve that. But mm. ultimately, when you start living life on your own terms, anything can happen. Absolutely. And you know what? I also kind of want to touch on when you say what, what, it fit, what does it mean to be well? You know, I could, you, as you know, this, most people will automatically go on the default of physical and they'll mm -hmm. go and work. Mm -hmm. And this is where society and obviously because amazing people like you, you know, need to change that needs to like that needs to shift. And there's some fantastic people out there that are, are contributing to that change. But being well is so much more than just being physical. It's been so much more than a number on the scale. It, it is it is like everything that I've just said. There's so much more to it. And actually, when we focus on that number on the scale, it's never about the number. It's never, ever about the number because I can almost guarantee every time we get to a number that we want to get to, we always want more and we strive for the next number. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's not about the number. This is about internal. So if you are focused on the number, just know that, you know, please, 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 it's not about that. You know, just stop and think and just think, like, okay, maybe I, I you know, maybe start looking inwards. In fact, mm -hmm. if, yeah, please start looking inwards, not me. <laughs> Awesome. So, Tanya, before we uh, sort of wrap, it, uh, wrap up this episode, is there anything else that you feel like you need to share or you want to share with our listeners before we uh, wrap up today's episode? Yeah, I do think that if anybody, just for anybody who is binge eating or emotionally eating and feel that they cannot get out of this, just know it is absolutely possible because, you know, people almost kind of like accept it, that, that that's their normal, that's how they eat, uh, they, there isn't any, you know, there's no other way, and honestly, there is a way, and also like, you know, there, there is a way, there is a way to, you know, change your behaviours, change your relationship with food, change how you see yourself, change how you see your body, there is a way, you know, there is a way to change, you know, to help, you know, lessen your thoughts, you know, to help anxiety, you do not have to stay in this place where you are miserable and unhappy and, you know, continuously beating yourself up. Um, I know when I was in that vicious cycle, I would wake up daily and I'd be like, you know, like feeling that dread, feeling that shame, feeling that guilt. And then every day I'd wake up, right, it's a new day. Today's the day. Today's the day that I'm going to smash it, smash my goals. And then by the evening, I'd, I'd, I'd done it all again. So just know that the and yeah there is a way out there really 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 is well said well said well said so tanya where can our listeners come and find you if they want to come and check out more about what you do and to hear more pearls of wisdom so I, i'm honestly i'm picking my phone because I've, what i've had two things over the past few days and i've only just changed all my on my things on my names on my social so so my Insta is food underscore body underscore freedom therapist underscore. I do have a Facebook group. Anybody's more than welcome. Um, and that's called food and body freedom. And if you want to, you know, come and find me on Facebook as well. I'm more than happy to, you know, have people in my Facebook profile. And my name is Tanya Danielle. Um, also, I've got my website, which is called pb slash the slash binge dot com. No worries, we'll pull the links into the, we'll pull the links into the show notes. Yeah, that might be helpful. Yeah. Definitely. So I just again, yeah. definitely. So again, just want to say, um, obviously, thank you for 
being on the episode today. It's been really great talking to you. And I'm sure that obviously anyone who's been listening to this is going to take something away from it. Um, one thing, a hundred things, they're definitely going to take uh, some wisdom away from this episode. So thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you thank so you much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for, for what we do. And thank you for all that you are and how you're showing up in the world. Yeah, thank you to you too as well. So yeah, it's much appreciated.